And what are some of your musical influence? I mean, uh, the old, I don't know how old you are, but for a lot of the older rappers, they've been exposed to Marvin and Stevie, and they've been exposed mm -hmm. to richer mm -hmm. lyric, you know, musical textures, mm -hmm. which kind of deprives the younger guys of being able to hear things. Right. Who, who are some of the people you uh, grew up listening to, and how has that informed your music? Um, I see a lot of, I could go from a lot of older groups, even to, um, it's a, it's a combination of people, music I used to listen to back in the day, my parents used to listen to, um, my aunts, they had, they all had different tastes. Some of my aunts used to like, like, alternative rock, and Prince, and, you know, Stevie, Oyez, and all of that. I could go forever with that, and then I graduated into hip hop and like uh, EPMD and a lot of that. And then it, after a certain turn, I met a lot of people who I was kind of like mentored by, seeing them actually making music and kind of kind of influenced my style. One of them be his brother right here, and um, and that kind of piles on. Like his inspirations, he brushed off to me people I wouldn't even probably have been paying attention to, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and, and it keeps on adding on. The more okay, people got to mention. Who? I remember this brother told me a story. I never, never had nobody's, uh, uh, nobody's, uh, a person tell me that uh, their parents had the first Pete Rock and Sale Smooth Jam. True, 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 true. <laughs> True. So his mom had the first Pete Rock and Sale Smooth Jam. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Oh man, she had the early tribe stuff. Yeah, she tribe. And so I guess it, a lot of the people around me had good taste in music, so mm -hmm. it just kind of influenced my taste. And I realized early on that just taste in general when it comes to not even just music, like clothes, like art, like you know, it's all it's all the same. Either you have it or you don't. Some people that have all the money in the world can walk down the street and just spend on stupid stuff because they don't have taste. Mm -hmm. But I, early on, I recognized that that's something you want to have. Do you think that someone should perform just because they can? There are a lot of people who are talented as artists mm -hmm. but don't really love it, but they mm -hmm. do it because they can. You know, because that's something that they have the ability to do, but it's not necessarily a passion for them. Do you think they should continue in the art, or you think they should, you know, find what they love? I say it's not it's not my job to tell them whether they should or shouldn't. I say some people may be looking for that. Some people may be looking for somebody who puts their heart and soul into the art. Um, it's something for everybody out there. There's some people who don't know how to be be that person, so they, I guess, um, they like the pull that, that maybe somebody like that may have. So they study that, and they, you know, they come up in that. It's, it's a lane for everybody. As a listener, mm -hmm. and as a fan of music, how important is conviction to you? Mm. Very much so. Most of the artists that I um, respect to this day, that was, that's the main thing. You have to have it. Yeah. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, Before Taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, what, was your, what was your mind frame going in, and how did you develop that concept in the first place? Hmm. Um, before Taxes, Actually, it was an indirect project. Actually, the attempt was to finish an album called The Urn, which will come out later this year. Um, the Urn? It's The Urn. Yeah. Okay. E A R N or U R N? Okay. Yeah. All right. And um, in the process of doing that, we had so many songs that um, like Slim Cat for one, he was um, torn, like when he was uh, getting around and doing stuff, and he was telling me I should put some songs that weren't going towards the other project. We just put them together so he can hang out when he goes around. And um, I did, it was like a 20 minute mix. Matter of fact, we was just saying it came around full circle because he 
put like a stack of those up at Fat Beats like a year, like a couple like years. A year and a half ago. A year and a half ago. It was just, I think it had like a, it had like a, a cover that wasn't even supposed to be the cover on. Just in the meantime, just threw it up there, some people picked it up, hit them back. It was like, yeah. And um, one of them was like, a, somebody was running a blog and asked me if they could put that out. And I told them um, I wasn't done. And I had like some more songs to add. By the time I finished, that 20 minute mix it turned to a 56 minute mix and it was like, oh. okay. Now, how different was the process, or was it any different from any normal Diamond District uh, material? Was the, was the mind frame different? Or? Very much so. Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of done on my leisure. Um, like uh, I was just doing a, a lot of random songs, a lot of different textures, different topics and stuff. Um, I got to shout out my brother Omoon, who was on the album. He was letting me live with him and allow me to, you know, in the process of getting my money straight and all, just do what I had to do, you know. And um, it's, for me, looking at the project, what I remember is all of what I was going through at that period. And um, when I listen to it, the people that I hear on it, these are people that was coming around and that was, you know, helping. I look at it even now, I'm in a whole different situation. So any music done now is going to sound totally different than that. But um, I'm glad to see it completed. Solidify.